Welcome into Deep Waters. We discuss all things boxing right now. Of course, the big news, it is official. We will get the rematch. Alexander Usyk versus Tyson Fury once again for the undisputed title courtesy of His Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh. His money making it happen. It looks like it will be in December. You see the tweet there, December 21st during Riyadh season. World will watch another historical fight night. Our commitment to boxing fans continues. Hope you enjoy it. I know we will. Jimmy Smith alongside Pauli Malinaji, Chris Algieri, and ESPN boxing analyst Timothy Bradley joining us via Zoom. Gentlemen, it is on. Also, it's on in a quick rematch from a very, very competitive fight. Pauli, in an X's and O's kind of way, what adjustments are you looking for in a fight that, once again, without the knockdown, we got to draw on that fight? Yeah, I mean, Fury just needs to... Um, I wouldn't say I don't want to say work on his conditioning, but he's got to figure out a way to relax a little bit more when when Usyk's putting on that mental pressure. Maybe even find a way to back Usyk off of him, you know? And for the smaller guy to continually back you up and cut the ring off, I think that mentally drained F uh, Fury a little bit and led to his physical uh, fatigue that, that eventually led to the yep. advantage Usyk got later on in the fight. That's one, that's one adjustment for sure. I'm sure also you got to think in this kind of fight, there's advantages, then there's adjustments, as in there's a, another adjustment to that adjustment. You know, that's what happens in these fights between world-class fighters at this level and these kind of fights. We saw that kind of thing in the first fight where there's adjustments made back and forth. So I'm sure that we're going to have to probably see that again on December 21st. Now, Chris, one of the things you always hear in combat sports is the winner fights the same fight twice. They won. This one being so close, the, the, the winner, when it comes to Usyk's style, he wasn't heads and tails above Fury. He does have to make some adjustments once again. What do you think those adjustments are? I think he's always going to adjust. That's what he, that's what it's actually what he's actually good at. It's so much. It's not so much that all right. This I've got a style. This is the style I fight. He adjusts on the fly and figures things out. And you can't just fight the same fight against a guy like Tyson Fury. He's way too dynamic. We've seen him fight so many different styles. I'm thinking back historically, Deontay Wilder fight. Tyson fights one way. Deontay Wilder fight two. He gains 15 pounds and fights an entirely different way. The guy has that ability, and I think you know to go back to that first question we asked Paulie is. What does Tyson need to do? I think he needs to go wilder, too. The body work from Usyk, the pressure from Usyk, the mental pressure from Usyk wore Tyson down. He never got to that second gear where he's going to drop his weight on you, get physical with you, make it ugly, grab your head and hit you in uppercuts. That's the style where I think he needs to employ to be successful in this fight. But I think both of these guys are so dynamic. It's going to come down to fight night, man. It's just who, who's going to be able to make their, their experience work? But he, does he have to come in heavier to do that? And yes. does he risk his conditioning being even worse by doing that? He doesn't have to work exactly. that hard. He worked way too hard in that oh, first fight. Tim, Tim? go ahead. Oh, what he got to do, so what he got to do is he got to hit the road work. That's what he got to do. You know, when you as you as you age out, man, and you start getting older, man, you stop doing less and less world work. Get your behind back on that road work, Tyson Fury. You need those lungs against Usyk. And I also think that uh, Tyson Fury is... I would say uh, damaged goods, man. I'm not going to lie. He's damaged goods. He don't like it on the chin. Earlier during the fight. Who likes it on the chin? <laughs> what was that? Who likes it that? on the chin? <laughs> <laughs> Who likes it on the chin? Well, I'm just saying, his punch resistance has faded drastically. But, but bro. listen, it's I mean, he got hit with a lot of body shots before that. That takes your chin away. Bro, he got hit with a left hand early in the fight that nobody would talk, right away. talk about. And First he got round. clipped. And I saw his eyes roll First back round. a little bit in his mm -hmm. head got buzzed by that shot man so if he's going to stand there and want to trade with 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 uh, Usyk and come forward you know i think he'll have some success exactly. but what happens when that counters exactly. come from from freaking Usyk is that damaged goods like it's not like damaged goods as you said though tim champ you know you got to understand he did have three fights with Deontay Wilder did that exactly. dent the chin a little bit and how Ch chins and, don't get better as you age no. and on top of that he got dropped by who in ganu as yeah. well yeah, so that's true. He's been down a lot. Two fights. How many times was he dropped? Six, seven yeah. times? Yeah. yeah. Think about that now. Yeah. So he don't believe in his chin as much as he did in the past at the end of the day. And that's the reason why I think he chose to box from the outside to maintain this guy, keep him outside. But the minute that Usyk stood his ground, he's like, you know what? Forget all those feints. Forget all these counters you're trying to do or trying to get me out of position. I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to fight you because I know when you let your hands go and you try to retreat, you're not disciplined defensively. And I think that Usyk knows that now and he's going to apply that and he's going to make adjustments himself and he's going to make this fight a lot easier than it was the first time around. What do you think of that from Tim? That, that the biggest surprise, let's be honest, in that first fight was that it was the power of the guy we thought would box taking on the guy who thought we thought had more power in Fury. Usyk 
Usyk was the one who got the knockdown. That ended up being the difference. Do you think he goes that power punching earlier in this fight, Paulie? No, I think he's a cerebral guy. As a matter of fact, I think there's adjustments he has to make defensively as well. He was getting hit with uppercuts and body shots uh, in those middle rounds. I, I think the positioning of Usyk's gloves has to change when he takes those when those uppercuts because there's a tunnel being a southpaw and you can get hit with those right uppercuts. And Fury was landing those shots. You know, he, he Usyk never really changes the positioning of his gloves, which is typically a good positioning up here, like sort of an earmuffs or up high. But when you bend, you're susceptible to uppercuts unless you change the positioning of your glove. For me. Uh, Personally, me, I never used to get hit with uppercuts. So whenever I bent down, I would use a catcher's mitt style where I bend down. And then when you're coming back up, you just lift the glove back up just in case you're going to get up into a hook. I feel like he's got to do something to that effect because if, I think Fury is going to look at the first fight and say, those uppercuts were working. I got to get back on those a little bit more. Maybe there's an adjustment there for Usyk when he's coming forward to defensively be a little bit more responsible with the glove positioning so that those uppercuts don't get in as easily. Holyfield Bo. In the second fight, Bo said, if I had stuck with my jab, I'd win that fight. I, it was working when I was throwing it. I didn't throw it enough. I was a little surprised, Chris, that the jab was working so well. We talked about the body shots working well. He kind of got away from that and let uh, Usyk back in the fight. Now, Usyk made great adjustments to those attacks. But are you surprised he didn't stick with the jab a little bit more later in the fight? No, because it, it comes back down to the conditioning aspect. You know, Being a jabber takes a lot of juice. Being a jabber and a mover, and Tyson Fury decided to be a jabber and a mover and fight up his back foot for a majority of that fight. But not to mention he's getting hit with those body shots throughout the fight. I think he tired late and got away from that snappy jab a little bit. Um, but also, Usyk was doing such a great job of fighting heavy on that front foot, being aggressive, fighting out of a power position. And I had said that in the lead-up to the fight when I was analyzing these two in terms of how they, they throw punches and how they jab. Usyk throws a hard jab. He was, he was getting inside the range of, of Tyson Fury and sticking him with a stick stuff, uh, stiff jab. So he's, he was technically getting out-jabbed out at the middle distance. So Usyk then had to go, I mean, I'm sorry, Fury then had to go to those uppercuts and fighting on the inside. So I, th that fight was extremely, extremely tactical. I mean, that's why we're doing it again. Yeah, we could talk about it all day. It was amazing fights. It's going to be an amazing rematch. But that's not the only big fight on the horizon. Canelo and the big pockets of his excellency are changing boxing. We'll discuss how right after this. Welcome back into Pro Box TV's Deep Waters. We do a deep dive on all things boxing. We've got the announcement of the rematch. Uh, Alexander Usyk versus Tyson Fury, December 21st in Saudi Arabia. Also, another big fight that is on the horizon, according to Turkey Al Al Sheikh, is right now the pound for pound number two. That's Terrence Bud Crawford versus, that's right, Canelo Alvarez. Might be on the horizon, but Canelo Alvarez willing to let go of his IBF 168-pound title in order to make that fight possibly happen. What does that leave? William Skull versus Vladimir Shishkin in September. The question, gentlemen, Turkey al has said, no sanctioning body is going to get in the way of me making the fights I want to make. Is Canelo dropping the IBF title part of that dynamic show we say, or that choice for the big fight? Paulie, what's your thought? I mean, yeah. Or you could just go with the sanctioning body and make the Benavidez fight. But you know, that's just, that, <laughs> we know how Paulie feels that's about just, it. That's right? just yeah. me. But that's just me. Or we could just vacate ones and just make uh, uh, you know fantasy fights. But, Whatever. None but of my business. As as far as fantasy fights go, is this being hyped? But a lot of people think this fight wouldn't it be physically competitive. Wouldn't it be a good step for either guy. Chris, what are your thoughts playing. on it, man? Uh, I mean, I, listen, there's a lot of mites. There's a lot of potential of this fight happening. They're saying uh, might happen, potential. I, I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it. I don't, I don't necessarily think this fight's going to happen. Um, and in terms of it being uh, a, a competitive fight, I don't know. I mean, it, there's weight classes for a reason. And I, I don't love this fight. I, there, there's good fights. You mentioned David Benavides. But Canelo Benavides makes way more sense. If you want to put money behind something, put that and, and you wouldn't need to vacate any titles. No, just and like, yeah, make, make the fights that, that, that matter. I, I don't think we need to be setting up you know these these fantasy fights. fantasy super fights. You know when you've got when you've got good guys in the weight class. You got David Morrell in the weight class too. That's, like these are excellent, excellent. This fights. is the the you know the pros and cons. Everything. This is the yeah. cons about having a, a guy with this kind of money who is still a bit of a casual, still learning on the job. Uh, if this was the '80s, he would make Tyson versus Sugar Ray Leonard. But also, right. yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, casual stuff. But uh, even when we're talking about you know all the good fights in the weight class for for uh, Canelo, obviously, there's good fights in, at 154 for Canelo for uh, Ter well, Terence Crawford as well. Yeah, there's a lot of really good fights. I, why are we why are we bypassing is, good this, fights in the weight this, class? This is what fights? I was talking about before about you 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 la you don't create new stars this way. You keep recycling names on top of names. You make them fight each other regardless of the weight class, star versus star, and the guys who could become stars get stuck. You know, because the other stars don't fight them, even though they're of, they're of the physical level to be able to take them on and maybe even beat them.
Is, is, is that your thought? Now. Tim, I'd love to get it's your different. opinions about it. Yeah, this, this so-called this, fantasy this, fight. No. This is different. This, is, this isn't this is Charlo, you know, wanting to receive a paycheck and just want to go up and think that he's going to beat Canelo Alvarez. I didn't think he was going to beat him. I told you it was a mismatch. This is something that Terrence Crawford has been planning for a very long time. It's been on his mind. Former pound for pound, number one fighter in the, in the world. Um, I know what you guys gonna say. Yeah, I do support him. I do support him. I was one of the one of the ones that that actually recognized his greatness early on when I brought him at the camp. So I know I know Terrence very well, man. When he puts his mind to something, when he sees something, and he sees something that he can exploit with Canelo Alvarez, man, you have to pay attention. He did, and he did the same thing when he fought Earl Spence. When many people didn't think that he can beat Earl Spence, he told you what he was gonna do, and he went in there and he dominated Earl Spence Jr. Now, am I scared for Crawford? I am a little scared. I'm not gonna lie. I, I am a little scared about the fight. But I'm not going to say that I don't want to see the fight because he's a fighter that's daring to be great. It's different than what Charlo did. Terrence wants to be great. And this is how he can become number one pound for pound in the game. If he goes up to 168 pounds and he beat a fighter of Canelo's class and he takes the throne from him at that weight class, man. I like the fight. Make the fight happen, Turkey, Turkey Al Sheik. Because don't be you. You guys are gonna be surprised of how well Crawford is going to do against Canelo Alvarez. I, 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 I don't. I don't. Go ahead. I don't, go ahead. I don't, I don't necessarily doubt it, Tim. I just think there's, there's better fights to yeah. be made instead of pushing this kind of fantasy situation where you're gonna push it more and more and more. And then the fights that you really like to see within the weight class that you know keep the keep the wheel of boxing turning. I'm always talking about the wheel turning. Uh, that did, they would they would end up jamming a lot of the wheels in boxing and a lot of the weight classes. You get into a habit of doing this, you jam a lot of the wheels. So that's what my fear is with doing making fights like this. If Canelo yeah. chooses to fight a fight of this kind, like where you're literally fighting a guy who's never even been close to the weight class, you got to relinquish all your belts. Leave them, put them out there for the rest of the other fighters. If you're not, if you're not willing to take on the contenders, and you know, you, listen, if you have all those belts, you have mandatories for all of those belts. And now you choose to fight a guy three weight classes below you. Relinquish all your belts. Simple as that. I got a random idea. Please. So, so, okay, she, this is just off the cuff, just me thinking. Be prepared. Uh, um, just you know, that I guess exactly. That's, Be prepared. Just, warning, warning just me right thinking now, out loud. Keyboard Tur warriors, Turkey, go. Turkey, go Turkey has a, a lot of money. We keep talking about all the money he has. And I've spoken to Margaret Goodman in the past at Elver Avada, but she doesn't have enough money to brain the test everybody all year round in an, in a, in an often enough basis. No. Why doesn't Turkey Al Al Sheik create a drug testing system with Margaret Goodman mm. and test all these guys all year round consistently all the time? And you'll see how fast the top of the weight classes clear out once guys get old. Hey, how about a pension as well, Bali? I mean, let's. Hey, let's man, I'm, I'm for it. No, I'm I mean, for it as well. Hey, you're going to force guys to retire early and once you drug testing game. them, you know, it, 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 that, that goes into it as well. Guys, I agree with you. Guys, and guys. And to qualify for the pension, you got to have certain rules. You've got to be a champion for a certain amount of time, all this other stuff. Stop. These are way too rational, way too good ide of ideas for boxing. <laughs> this is boxing. You guys are thinking ethically and rationally. The, the what are you doing? Perky's new blood. Maybe he means well. You know, that's all I'm saying. Chris, I want to get your opinion about this idea, and it's across combat sports, right? John Jones, Stipe Miocic, he said, look, I've been good so long, I've kind of earned this, right? Taking a lot of criticism, same thing. Drop the belt, you want to fight the best yep. guy, right? Who's Tom Aspinall, by the way. But this idea that I've earned this freak show, big money fight. You hear that a lot from guys at the end of their careers. Chris, what's your thought on it? Oh, I agree. I think Terrence Crawford has earned the mega fights, which is yeah. why he's able to bypass, you know, a, a, you know, fights of 47. He's getting jumping right into 154. I, I get that. And, and, and he's earned it. If anyone's earned it, he has. Canelo's earned it as well. But again, if you're going to be making these super fights, you've got all these contenders sitting outside like, my dream is to be a world champion. I can't be a world champion because the top of my weight class is the best fighter in the world. What kind of news is that? You know, like, it's not because I can't get, it's because I can't get the fight. I want to fight him. Can't get him because he's fighting super fights. He's fighting dragons. He's fighting grizzly bears. You know, like, what are we doing? Yeah. The five-on-five -five format, will it open up, as we said, opportunities for other fighters with stacked cards? We'll discuss it when we come back. Welcome back to Deep Waters, where we take a deep dive into all things boxing. Big card on Saturday doesn't just feature great fighters, a five-on-five -five promoter versus promoter matchup that may be the blueprint for the future of the sport for the next couple of years. Gentlemen, it's a very, very simple question. A lot of top names in this five-on-five -five matchup. Which fight are you looking forward to most? What do you think the fans should tune in for? Casuals, hardcores, what do you think? For 
This weekend's five this on weekend's five. five. You want five me to just run? You put me on the spot and pick one right now. I put you on the spot to pick one. I got one. one if you want me to seven front. I mean, I, I, I like uh, I like Dubois Ergovich. I nice. like Dubois Ergovich. Yeah. Hard hitting, one undefeated. That's right. It, yeah, it's I mean, going that, to lead to a knockout. I mean, it, what everybody's listen, predicting. Listen, right. you can pick any one of those, and it's, it, they're they're a main event on any other show, right? right? So, I mean, I, you put me on the spot. I think about it. Gun to my head. The Wyrgovich is my favorite one. Does that mean I don't like the other ones? I love the other ones. I love the whole card. Chris, you were gonna jump in front. Take that bullet. Go ahead, do it. Ford and Ball. Yeah. Yep. Raymond Ford and Ball. That fight is gonna be fun. Cause cause Raymond Ford can box but he also will stand with you, and he'll stay in the middle. And Ball only wants to stand with you. I mean, the guy's five foot two. He wants to come up forward. He's a, he's a fire hydrant. He's going to throw bombs. He's got a big left hook. And I think Ford will, will plant his feet enough to make that a really exciting fight. He'll box at times. He'll stand in front at times. That's going to be a barn burner. And they're both young. They're both hungry. Ball got robbed of winning a title in his last fight against Ray Vargas. Ray's coming off an amazing fight so of the year type, a crazy Arturo Gotti type win. Yep. So you're saying Ball is going to bring his balls. Balls all ball bring, bring all, all the balls. balls. Ball is balls. Ball is balls ball. to the wall. Balls to the wall. Ball is ball. Nick Ball is balls to the wall. That should be his nickname. Now ball. Nick balls, balls to the wall. Ball. Now, is, it, is it hard to sell fans, even hardcore fans? On we were discussing it uh, this week about you know on a, on a card full of heavyweights. These are lighter guys. Is it hard to stand out on a card like this where, Hell where no. fans Tim, take nothing. it away, bro. You were gonna say the same thing. I, I, I was gonna say the same thing, but yeah. now Tim is gonna say, hey, hey yo, I agreed to hell with you. But I'm going with Wilder and Zhang now. And Jean, yeah, baby. Yeah. Man, that's going to be a fight right there because I'm wondering how much Wilder has left. Is he ruined from the Fury fight? Um, and he might be, but he can still land the right hand and end the fight. Yeah, I mean, it's a. I think he might be more ruined from the Parker that, fight. <laughs> however, and the Parker fight. I mean, anybody that has any sort of IQ, it spooks the hell out of Wilder, man. You know, um, and I saw that with Parker. You know, Parker, light puncher, not a big heavy puncher, but he was spooked. He was just spooked by the fact that he was like, damn, this guy, his movements. Ooh, yeah, he moves his head I good. Like he circles. Movement. He moves. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to take a risk. And Zhang is one of those type of fighters. He's a thinking southpaw, bro. He got an automatic freaking pistol with that left hand right down the middle. Mm -hmm. He can very well catch Wilder yeah. before he even He's got a good trainer. Right I like Sean George in the corner. Him out. I like Sean so, George in the corner of Zhang, too. So at Smart the end up. of the day, man, hey, hey, look, that's a fight that can end like this. Yep. You know, and that's yep. gonna have me at the edge of the seat because anyone, the, the person that lands first is probably the one that's gonna win the damn fight. Tim, I agree. I can see that fight ending in so many different ways. I can see it early. I can see it middle. I can see it late. I can see either one of them guys doing it. Uh, very, very, very good fight. one-sided for either guy. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Everything Paul, can happen in that fight. Paul, I'm very curious about this. A lot of times when you see a fighter and, and they're shot, right? It's the last one. They're not doing well. Usually. It isn't defensive lapses. It's offensive lapses. They can't pull the pull trigger. The trigger yeah. Everybody thinks your chin goes. Sometimes it does, but across combat sports, and we've seen all of them, it's this idea that a fighter who's trigger. done can't pull the yeah. trigger. Did you see that in Wilder last time out? I definitely saw it in Wilder, but I also saw it in Zhang. You know, with, with, with both of them against Parker really showed that, you know, they weren't pulling the trigger. But also Parker, to their... To their argument, the argument for them, Parker is also a shifty target. And so, he's gotten better. Yeah, so... He's gotten better. You know, we'll see against one another where they're a little bit more flat-footed what happens. Chris, I'm curious about this. When, when a fighter says, I might retire with a loss, does it change the strategy that you get on him early? Remind him, you're going to be sipping margaritas next week. Do you want to take this punch? <laughs> right? Well, you're going to be on the beach. Do you want to take this this shot again? What, what's your thought on it, Chris? For the record, Strategically. Wilder said that before the Parker fight, too. Right. And here we are. So, right? So, yeah. so to what your point... Yeah. Get did on that, him did that affect that fight? Is that why he didn't bring it like he had to? Yeah, and is he fighting again then, because we you know what happened? Because then, then you think, because then you sipping margaritas really it, bitter. They're bitter, <laughs> and you want to get back in there. They you are know? good. <laughs> yeah, the, mar yeah. Margaritas are good. Tim, your idea on the strategy of taking on somebody who said this might be my last fight. Do you start hitting early and let him know it's going to be a tough fight? Do you really want to go through this again? What's yeah, well, I mean that's where that's where that's where Zhang is 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 uh more lively. Is early in fights. Yeah. If he fades late in fights, I, first you know, six rounds he's a nightmare. He needs to get he need to get his big ass on the treadmill too and start running, <laughs> man. Do some road work. A lot of the heavyweights don't like to run, and that's a fact. Either swim hold your breath do something to you know <laughs> hold your breath cardio i mean sometimes that's they say don't hold your breath don't but, tim don't hold your breath that he's that he's gonna do any running <laughs> but just put it this way man i i think that i think that wilder what wilder has to do he has to come in with a different mentality man the mentality of being defensive and trying to change things and be us be who you are 
You know, be can who he you be are. that guy though? He's can, gotta, he, he's, can he be that guy again though, Tim? He's got to be bomb squad. Can he be that bomb guy again? Bomb squad though? coming but, in up like that, right? But Tim, can he be like that, that guy though? Has he made too much money? Is he too comfortable? That's a killer mentality. Can he go but, hey, take not, his mind to that place? Let's not forget the ayahuasca trips too. That yeah. that, that takes the bomb squad out of you pretty quick. Yeah, and you the, got and that, that right. chin again, again. That chin, the chin. I mean, can he take a punch at the end of the day? Because that right there is the reason why fighters become gun shy. You know, not only are they not be able to react, but the fact that they don't trust their chin getting yeah. hit on that chin. I've seen not that. by the hair of my chinny chin chin. That's right. It's the questions that make a fight interesting. A lot of questions this weekend, including does five on five become the new model in boxing? We'll discuss it when we come back. Welcome back into Deep Waters, where we take a deep dive in, into all things boxing this weekend. Five on five card. Will that be the future of boxing for the foreseeable future, next couple years? So, Chris, i got to start with you, because whenever you've talked about this, you've said one of the diff difficulties with fighters is, you know, promoters kind of protecting their guy. This five on five promoter versus promoter team matchup, you throw in your ringers. The best fight the best. Do you think it's the future, Chris? Man, I love this. Let's do this all the time. We've had we, a lot of times we always say we can't make fights because the promoters are on different sides of the streets. We can't get this guy. Now we're literally putting them against each other. And not only is it getting, Tim, you mentioned this earlier in the show, is it getting these, these, these promoters to work together, it's pitting them against each other. Now you got ego involved. Now I want to win. I want to, yeah. Eddie Hearn. Better? Eddie Hearn wants to beat Frank Warren. Yep. Frank Warren wants to beat Eddie Hearn. I'm going to put my best guy up because I want my guy to win that, that, that matchup. And not only that, they're getting mercenaries too. They're getting guys from other places. We got yeah. Wilder fighting on Matchroom. Yeah. We got, we got er uh, I'm sorry, Zhang fighting on, on Frank Warren. Who would have believed that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this, is, this is great. I love this. You're pitting, you're pitting guys with egos against each other. And not only have their egos and their pride yeah. on the line, they have scenarios. money on the line. It's I great. I, I love, love it. it. Yeah, Tim, what's your thought on it, man? You've been in this game for a long time. What's your thought on this five-on-five -five team promoter versus promoter? You think it's Guns for hire. Yep. I like it. I, I, I like it. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I do like it at the end of the day. And just as Tim, you, you sound saying, pessimistic. Probably. You've said it several times. <laughs> just put it this way, man. You know, the reason why a lot of times the fights don't get made because different promoters, different sides of the street, is because the risk involved, the money. Yeah. Who's going to put up the money? Who's going to put up the well, money? It's now the loss of money. Them. Now they're going to, they don't have to put up the money. Now you got somebody else that's going to put up the money. So the risk is taken from the promoters. And then you're having one entity, the network, which is, uh, which is the zone that's going to put it on. And then you have other networks that's jumping on the bandwagon. So no one's really losing here, you know, at the end of the day. So I think it works for boxing. I think it works for the promoters as well. And it also works for the fighters. I don't give a damn who loses. Just fight the fights. Fight the best guys out there. You win, lose. You put up a good up at good fight. You know, you're going to come right back. But if you if you put up a snoozer, then, then there's going to be a problem for you. All right, I got to ask my Italian-American, my paisan right here, about the pride involved. You said there's no way to lose. You lose four to one, you get blanked 5-0, our promoters can go, oh, I'm sitting away from that. I'm curious. All these promoters have TV contracts with other networks. The network you're with, if you start to see your, your, your team get blanked, the network you're with might be like, maybe I got to deal with a, with a second-rate promoter. I, I'm not going to renew that contract with this promoter. You know, so Is that the worst-case scenario more, of this weekend? More, yeah, that it's 4-1, 5-0. Yeah. It's more than bragging rights. It's more than bragging rights, it's, it's than bragging rights bro. I mean, there's... Because, yeah, the zone has all of these matchups constantly, but all these promoters also belong to other networks themselves. You don't want to maybe make the higher upset the network you go back to be like, bro, what's up with your stable? Well, they kind of suck. You know, like, <laughs> you know, you don't want to go because those higher ups in those places, they're not boxing people. They just look at X's and O's. You're winning or losing. If you're losing all your fights, they're going to be like, what's going on over here? Check your I boys. Your Check your boys, right? Yeah. Paulie knows that very, very well, but it's going to be fun. Five on five this weekend. And of course, don't forget to join us post fight. We're discussing five on five and all the pride involved. We'll see you next time.